Another day, another candidate. Former Vice President Mike Pence formally launched his 2024 campaign Wednesday, setting up a rare battle between two former running mates. He explained his decision to challenge his former boss, Donald Trump, during his launch event in Des Moines, Iowa. My former running mate continues to insist that I had the right to overturn the election. But President Trump was wrong then. And he's wrong now. Pence is joining a crowded field of candidates just this week. North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum and former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie announced their bids. CBS News Chief Elections and Campaign Correspondent Robert Costa has more. And I'm running for president of the United States of America. Former Vice President Mike Pence made it official this afternoon in Iowa, rebuking his former boss and current frontrunner Donald Trump. President Trump's words were reckless. Pence cited January 6th and how Trump pressured him to overturn the 2020 election. I hope Mike is going to do the right thing. I hope so. Anyone who asks someone else to put them over the Constitution should never be president of the United States again. Pence's refusal to do Trump's bidding that day made him a target of the former president's loyal base and the path to the nomination all the more difficult. President Trump also demanded that I choose between him and the Constitution. Now voters will be faced with the same choice. With roughly a dozen candidates in the race and Pence polling in the single digits, he's counting on a strong showing in the Iowa caucuses. Appealing to the state's evangelical voters, many of whom oppose abortion rights, he knocked Trump again. Sanctity of life has been our party's calling for a half a century, long before Donald Trump was a part of it. But now he treats it as an inconvenience, even blaming our election losses in 2022 on overturning Roe v. Wade. Pence told CBS News he went after Trump because the election is a crossroads for Republicans. Why was that so important to you to do? So it's time. And Robert Costa joins us now. Uh, Bob, that's striking that Mike Pence, who is pretty measured in the way he goes about things, even after uh, the January 6th insurrection, is picking up the pace. Do you think that's just an announcement today kind of thing or that this is going to be his consistent strategy with respect to his former boss? It appears to me, John, based on my conversations with Pence himself and with Pence's advisors today, that this was a reluctant conclusion. They have spent two years after the Capitol attack trying to carve out their own space in the Republican Party and think about a 2024 presidential race on their terms articulating their vision for the country, the future of American conservatism. But January 6, January 6 keeps revving back as an issue in Pence's political orbit. He's being called as a witness in the special counsel's ongoing grand jury investigation. And because of that reality, Pence decided clearly today in his announcement to take it on directly and to say that what Trump did on January 6 was ignore the Constitution and try to get him, the vice president, to overturn an American election. I went up to Pence after his remarks. That's part of the, the good thing about being here as a reporter. And I said, why did you do this, sir? Why did you go at this issue in this way today? And he just said to me, as we showed, it's time. It's time. And it's time in clearly his world to do this. And if he has any chance, there's a belief that he has to do it in this way or else he'll just be seeming like he's avoiding the elephant in the room. Let me ask you about evangelical voters because um, they're different than they used to be in part because they made a decision about Donald Trump. So the question is, evangelicals like Donald Trump and he won in 2016 in places uh, that you wouldn't have expected with heavy evangelical electorates. So what is it about Mike Pence's pitch that's going to actually take them away from Donald Trump? He's appealing to these evangelical Christian voters in Iowa who are highly politically engaged because he's arguing for a more conservative position on the margins. As you said, former President Trump is someone who nominated justices to the Supreme Court who ultimately ended up working to overturn in their decision, their ruling, Roe v. Wade. So how much further to the right can you get than a president who nominated justices who did that? Well, Pence is saying he has more strident language on abortion, wants to push more forcefully for a national abortion ban. And it's in that particular space politically on the right side of the, the spectrum that he's hoping some of these Iowa evangelical voters listen to him a little bit more intently and say he's one of us. Bob, before I let you go, there's a development in the Department of Justice's special counsel grand jury investigation into January 6th. What can you tell us? 
CBS News has just learned tonight, for two people familiar with the matter, that Steve Bannon, the former chief White House strategist for Donald Trump, who left in 2017 but has since become a key Trump ally and worked with Trump in and around January 6th, has been issued a subpoena by the special counsel to come in and testify about January 6th and his role around that episode. As you remember, Bannon said on his podcast, The War Room, his radio show, TV show, the day before that all hell is going to break loose on January 6th, an ominous prediction. Bannon notably defied his congressional subpoena from the January 6th committee. No word yet on how he's going to handle this. Robert Costa in Des Moines, Iowa, breaking it all down for us. Thanks, Bob. Thank you.